Hello. Okay, so today we're going to be mucking about with um, Bifrost Aero, and we're going to be looking at how to create something like this uh, using collisions and whatnot. <coughs> okay. So you can use this for a multitude of things, basically anything that you need smoke in. So tire smoke, um, <coughs> ghosts, whatever, special effects, stuff like that. Um, we're just going to show you how aero works. Um, I'm going to be using um, a simple technique just to get it all up and running and show you a few things that you may know or you may not know. But it's um, it's fairly simple to do. It's a bit easier than uh, my fluids, but in my mind it's kind of sort of slightly less functional in terms of the sort of looks you can get kind of at the moment especially if you need to create like fire alongside it so um <clears throat> but it is it's very good it's very good and uh, you get a better look and less kind of stepping with fast fluids than you would with uh my fluids all right so let's crack on um i'm just going to get rid of the um uh Bifrost stuff, and then we'll go through and just have a look at the scene and get started. Okay, so literally all I've got in my scene, let me just show all. I've literally got this sphere which I've pulled around a bit that just loops around this nerve circle as a motion path. Um, just set it to loop in the uh, graph of the earth. And then I've just got the actual nerve circle animating up and scaling up and going around here. Okay, and that's that's it. Um, so yeah, let's get started. If you take a look at my grid, this is a standard Maya grid. So this is the kind of scale that I'm using. Um, <coughs> so yeah. Um, right, so with the sphere selected, let's just go into Bifrost Fluids, which is in your FX menu, and click on Aero. So that'll take a minute to think about it, and we can see that we've got um, the particles showing up on the sphere there, and if I just hit play, we can see that they're going to start spinning around with our animation. Right, now, so now at the moment, where we've got any collisions going on, so with the boundary box selected, we'll just select all of our geometry that we want affected, including the floor, and we should just go to Bifrost Fluids Collider. So now they are all collision objects, um, and we should be able to see that <coughs> by uh, seeing the particles collide. Strangely enough, and there we go. We get some collision going on here. You can see that it's not going through the object, which is lovely, jubbly. Right, so. The next thing I want to do is um, I want to introduce some turbulence. So with the, um, there's no actual turbulent value inside the attributes of the uh, aero shape, um, not like there is with my fluid. So you, you, with the boundary box selected, just go into uh, Bifrost Fluids and we're going to click on Motion Field. Now Motion Field's got a few options um, inside of it. I'm just going to turn off direction, but I'm going to turn on turbulence. And I'm going to stick this up at about 30. I'm going to go into the turbulent noise. Um, and we've got a turbulence magnitude. I'm going to have that on 10. Just so we can see what's happening. Um, and then we'll just rewind and play. See if we get any turbulence going on. <coughs> see now it can be that the fluid. Um, when it's going around the nerve circle. Is kind of swinging out too much. From that circle. And we can control that. Um. So we'll just, we'll see. But there's some nice turbulence going on now. We've got this kind of twisty, wavy stuff going on inside the smoke. Um, and that's what I'm after. Which is all good. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually look at our smoke in kind of real time. Um, instead of the particles. So if we just stop that. And we go into, by selecting the <coughs> bounding box. We'll just turn off particles and turn on voxels. And voxels will give us a rough idea of what the smoke's looking like. You can see it's bent around this edge here. Um, it's just starting to touch this edge here. Um, and it's not intersecting the floor. 
So the next step really is to just start looking at look a little bit. Um, and this is a bit of a weird one for me because let's just get the hive shade open. Um, let's get rid of that, 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 and that. So what I have when I set up a uh, aero object is an AI standard volume shader, um, which comes with it, which is fine for rendering with um, Arnold, but I render with V-Ray. Um, <clears throat> I think it's supposed to give you a Bifrost shader um, by default, but maybe that's just something wrong with my settings, I'm not sure, but if you haven't got it, just type in Bifrost into your search in your shaders and then click on the Bifrost material and it will be red like a surface shader. Um, and to apply a material to your box, just obviously select the box and then uh, assign the material to the selected. And you can see that, that just changed there. Um, and we go into the material itself. Now this is where you can play around with the density and the thick, you know, the thickness of your smoke. Um, so we can pull up the scale value there. And you're starting to see the smoke a lot more. A lot, my, a lot like the uh, density in my fluids. Um, so that's quite cool, and you get to see a bit more detail going on. And also you can change the colours uh, and that inside here at the moment. Um, the other thing we haven't done really is uh, kind of played around with the um, voxel size. So we've got the master voxel size inside the um, aero properties container. Um, and it's quite low at the moment really. It's set to 0 0.5 which is by default. So it's not like a whole load of information there. Um, but we are simulating a bit faster. So it's kind of for and against. Um, so yeah, I might kind of, I might drag that down to um, point 0.4, run the simulation again, and see where we get. As I said before, using the aero, it's a it's a bit quicker to set up than uh, my fluids. Um, also with fast moving fluid, which this kind of would be with um, with my fluids. Um, you don't get as much stepping. I don't know if, if you've ever used fast fluids, you can get quite a lot of stepping in um, my fluids, and it's quite difficult to get rid of. Um, so obviously, this is used in Bifrost uh, in conjunction with like liquid. So it's used for the foam and froth in water, but um, Autodesk also pushed this out as being a good sort of um, uh, you can you know use use this for smoke and gaseous objects all right so that's basically doing its thing I'm kind of happy with that I'll just have a quick look in V-Ray to see if it's uh, rendering how I want it to be um, we'll play around with the shader a little bit but yeah it's only going to be a quick one quick tutorial because uh, you know it's just giving you the basics of it um, this is something I would um, just add if you want to slow the uh, simulation down, as in you don't want that fluid to be ejecting out from that uh, nerve circle uh, as much, you can come in and change the transport time scale. So lower or higher that scale is going to speed up. How it's, kind of, it's kind of a bit like the conserve attribute in uh, end particles. So it's either going to make them uh, affected by the dynamics more or less by cranking the scale up or down. That's how I've found it anyway. Um, so yeah, let's just hit IPR for V-Ray at the moment. <clears throat> we can see it's rendering, it's rendering with shadows. It's looking good. It's looking, you know, like smoke-like. Um, and then really it's just going to be about tweaking it for what you want it to look like. So if we want to go with something like black, we can do that. Um, <clears throat> just stop this and update it. Should show up black. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you could stick a different color in here if you wanted. Uh, you could just go with like a blue or something. Um, that's just going to update here. You see? Hmm. So plenty of uses for this. You could also add in to the same um, volume uh, more bits of geometry. So if you've got bits of geometry just kind of going like that, um, you can have smoke coming off of all of that. So that's it really. I suppose just quickly we could just have a look how this looks in Arnold. Um, we just go, um, Arnold, I don't really use Arnold, but let's just go to lights, uh, area light. Um, drag that over here, drag that over here. Let's just scale that up a bit. Let's just rotate it 
rotate that a bit, much like we did with the D rate, and then we'll just switch over to Arnold. Uh, I'm going to close that, and then with this selected, well, I mean, Arnold should render the bifold shader as well. Um, so let's just hit render with Arnold. Wow, that's nice, Arnold. <laughs> what the hell? So, right, let's just add in the AI standard volume shader that seems to be coming uh, by default anyway. Let's see if Arnold copes with that a bit better. Yes, come on, if you tell that's gonna that's gonna work. Oh, I imagine though that the uh, the light in Arnold isn't bright enough. Let's just give him a seven for a minute. Yeah, so we'll try that. See if it renders. Come on, Arnold. Don't think about it too much. Just render, render. I just want to see if it shows up, really. So again, use this for transitions around characters. Um, you can use it for kind of feet squashing into the floor. Um, there's quite a lot you can do with it. And um, we should start looking at Bifrost as well and start playing around with Bifrost to see just how good that bad boy is. <clears throat> so we've got a square turning up now. Feel free to fast forward on this particular recording software. I haven't got a pause button. I'd have to stop it and then start a new movie and then edit it together. And I really can't be bothered. So if you're wondering why I've done that, there's your reason. So obviously rendering all the bits that we don't want to see first. Because they're simpler. But we're nearly there. <clears throat> but yeah, well we can see that Arnold's rendering it as smoke. But obviously it needs its AI standard volume shader assigned to it. <clears throat> and again with the AI shader, um, you can indeed tweak the density, etc. for it to work. Also, well there you go guys, hope that helps. Um, again, as with all my tutorials, they're just an idea. Just get playing with it, nothing polished here. But um, it's just giving you an idea of how to get aero working, how to get some smoke happening, how to work with some collisions and motion fields, adding a bit of turbulence, um, and just seeing what it looks like rendered in both V-Ray and Arnold. Cheers, guys. See ya.